baby, I love you more than anything else in this whole world. There's a, a time and place for this kind of thing. Your mom is dating scum. Like that unmistakable queasy feeling you get after losing four Super Bowls in a row. This is the award-winning Talk Soup. Greg Kinnear back on the air, checking out highlights one more time. I'm sorry, Tom. Back there in Lackawanna. Very sad news. Well, what can you do? It's only football. Good show for you today, though. We've got that. Time to bounce back from the NFL playoff championship and give you the kind of thing that'll set your day straight. Highlights of talk shows. In a little while, you'll meet a woman with nine lives. Tim Allen suffered some serious earthquake damage, I guess, out here, and he's going to tell us about that. Plus, plus, a phone sex operator meets a phone sex lover, I guess. First up, though, Tanya has only been married for, I guess, seven months, and in that short time, she claims, sadly, unfortunately, she has fallen out of love with her young husband. His name is Chris. Surprisingly enough, her mom is siding with Chris in this whole dispute. She thinks they're a good couple. She doesn't want her daughter to get divorced. And as this clip from Sally Jesse Raphael reveals, she is, well, mom is very vocal about her views. They've never lived as husband and wife. Let me tell you, she gave this kid half a chance, half a chance. I he would kiss the ground she walks on. That's not what I want. I want she to wants love to be someone. abused. I don't by want the other someone jerk. to be my my really? maid. She does. She does. He abuses her. Ask her. Let's tell the truth, Tanya. I told you I'm not coming here to lie. Tanya, here's a letter. You want to hear this letter? I didn't write it. Sure, she did. Sure. This is to her husband before they were married. Now I forced this girl to write this letter. I had a gun to her head, please. <laughs> Baby, I love you more than anything else in this whole world, and I need to be close to you. And I wish we could be be right there i wish i could be right there because if i could i would there's no one else i want you're the only one for me my heart totally belongs to you i mean this is somebody who doesn't love this kid never did i, I didn't know him. him you didn't know him she knew him i thought two years was somebody before that... and went out with him and then can i just she... be 18 years old and not know yes, what Tanya, i want but i wasn't the one who came to me and said i don't I love be him married. i want to be happy with someone that can make me happy. And I don't know who it is. Happy. No, I want to be then with whoever it is. I'm not looking for wait, anyone. Wait. I just want to... Oh, yeah, she moved out of my house just before no, Christmas. No, I didn't this move out. She Christmas. kicked me out. I didn't kick her out. She took my car away. She, she punished me because I wanted a divorce. I don't want to take sides here, but hasn't Tanya been punished enough by mom? It appear. Tanya's husband, Chris, is in the service and has been away from home throughout most of their, their long tumultuous seven-month marriage. Tanya says she only got together with him because her mom approved of the match, and apparently mom does not approve of much. Tanya and Chris should check out Sally's show this Wednesday. The topic will be spicing up a drab, uneventful, dare I say sour, little marriage Wednesday. I guess they don't call them sexagenarians for nothing, right? Many folks out there over 60 enjoying active love lives. A couple of these hot-blooded seniors were featured on a fascinating edition of Sonya Live. Take a look at, well, take a look at this. Who initiates? Both of you? You most of the time? Doesn't matter. Uh, no, it really doesn't matter. Just happens. It just happens. Well, wait a minute now. You know, I, does that mean it's like the elbow over no, to no. the side? No, 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 you, no. Uh, no, how does that occur? It's not this spontaneous uh, sort of thing that uh, one associates with uh, teenagers. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's uh, just taking advantage of uh, each other's presence. Oh, and uh, there's sometimes it's just the inviting aspect of somebody's nape of the neck which triggers the imagination. I haven't heard someone talk about the nape of the neck for a very, <laughs> very long time. I, I'm just curious, though. You know, when you're younger, you go to Victoria's Secrets, if they, you think about alluring lingerie. And do you wear um, Speedo bikinis? I mean, do you try to um, jazz things up in what you wear? Uh, no, I don't think so. There's a, a time and place for this kind of thing. We're mature people. We don't mm -hmm. pretend to be anything except mature people. And... Uh, we don't go in for the business with the uh, 
whipped cream or the cherries or that sort of thing. Well, why not? That's nonsense. Well, if it, if it should occur to us, perhaps we would. <laughs> I love that. Well, we don't go for that business of the whipped cream and uh, cherries. Why not? Bring it on, baby! <laughs> James and Faye say that they are no longer interested in lust. They prefer true caring and intimacy and are doing much better. And apparently, Sonia was inquiring about where they do their shopping. As it turns out, Octogenarian Secret is apparently the spot. On Sonia's show Wednesday, you're going to learn what it's like growing up in a racist family. She'll talk to a racist family Wednesday, and you'll see the highlight here. Home Improvement's Tim Allen will be fixing up his own home for some time to come. The recent Los Angeles earthquake out here gave Allen and his family quite a scare, as it did all of us, also did massive damage to his property. Chantal from Good Morning America visited Allen on location in Atlanta and asked him about the harrowing natural disaster. Take a look at this. Now, I was in Los Angeles during the quake, and I know it shook me up. Were you there, and did you get... I got structural damage. I got every window broke. I got both water heaters broke. I'm running buck naked through the house, screaming so loud that my wife and I can't even hear each other. We're going, stop yelling! You yelling! I'm not yelling! Stop yelling! What the hell is happening? The earth was shit. I mean, I want to get out of there. What a, what a weird place to live. Yeah. It was horrible. I mean, I've, I've been scared. I've, I've raced cars. I've been in an airplane crash. I've seen my wife pregnant, naked, coming after me. I'm, I've seen horrible things. <laughs> that was a little joke. Of course, she'll hate when I say that. I mean, you know, at, at nine months, ready to go. Come on. <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's running after you. A little scary, a little I guess. A little scary, a little odd. But that was a terrifying yes, thing. Yes, it was terrifying. Yeah. Tim Allen in Atlanta filming a special edition of Home Improvement. The episodes, I guess, uh, air soon. Yeah, that's all we can tell you is they air soon. We don't have a date yet. We're Talk Soup. Wednesday in Good Morning America, learn how to pick the right credit card for your financial needs. We've titled this segment... What did we title it? Oh, there it is. How to pick the right credit card, Wednesday. Break time when we come back, and they called it Turtle Love. Plus, Mom is dating a complete, undisputable creep. All of them, but one in particular, I don't see how you can date somebody or even associate with them when they've threatened your life. Literally. Like sandpaper boxer shorts, two sizes too small. It's Talk Soup. Sandy Michelle apparently cannot stand the man their mother, Nanette, is dating. They say he is an alcoholic, abusive, all-around, no good Nick. Nanette doesn't deny any of these charges, yet, <laughs> yet as Bertice Berry learned in one of her probing interviews, she intends to stand by her man all the same. I believe that we have a highlight. Michelle, you say your mom is dating scum. Yeah. Why? Good word for it. Why? Well, what kind I of men are they? Not all of them, but one in particular. I don't see how you can date somebody or even associate with them when they've threatened your life. Literally. So, so Nanette, they butt in, tell you he's a bad guy for you? Sounds like it. Oh, well, sure. That's their opinion. That's well, their opinion. He has gone through a lot. He, he's an alcoholic, and he's going through um, AA and stuff like that. He has beat me, yeah. You just, so, so Sandy, I mean, your mom just on national TV goes, he has beat me, yeah. I know. How do you respond to that? Well, beat you once, he's always going to beat you. It doesn't matter what happens. I mean, what? I mean, if my husband ever, ever laid a finger on me, He'd be gone. I don't care. Yeah. Highlight of Bertice Berry. The girls say their mom developed a penchant for complete and total losers after breaking up with breaking up with her longtime boyfriend some five years ago. On Wednesday's show, Bertice invites some unhappy wives to confront their hot and bothered husbands. These guys apparently get their jollies hanging out in local nudie nudie strip clubs. That will be. Wednesday.
Well, I guess we've all heard the expression, cats have nine lives. Yeah. Little audio reference for you there at home. Well, in some rare cases, the old adage also applies to people. Case in point, you're about to meet Sandy Rogers. She was a recent guest on the Mo Gaffney show. Sandy tried to take her own life nine separate occasions. She apparently attempted this before finally realizing that life is certainly worth living and fortunately decided to uh, change her position on this whole matter. In the beginning, she used sleeping pills, but her last attempt involved a nasty gunshot wound to the heart. So what did you do? So I knew where my mother kept her guns for, that she had for uh, protection. <laughs> and first I tried the automatic. And uh, I didn't know how to cock it. And so I was trying to use it without cocking it and I couldn't do it. So then I took the one, the pearl handled 32 and I had seen TV enough to know that you pull the, the cock it back and like then that. pull it. Yeah. Yeah, so that one worked. And where, where did you shoot yourself? I shot myself in the heart. Uh, in the heart? Yeah, people had said, hey, why didn't you put it in your mouth? But uh, oh. since I was a surgery clinic nurse, I How had... How kind of them to think of that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, alive, get out of here. Yeah. But I uh, had a uh, patient, because uh, I was a plastic surgery clinic nurse too, because that the surgery clinic nurse had different surgeries each time. And I had a patient who had put a shotgun in his mouth and he lived. All it did was take his face off. Mm -hmm. And so he was having to have all this reconstructive work, taking off his, you know, making a mouth, making a nose. And so I decided that I didn't want to try that way because it didn't work for him. And I didn't have a shotgun anyhow. Let's move on. Wednesday on Moe's show, meet a female bounty hunter and a female private detective who goes by the name Rat Dog Dick. It's Lady Crime Fighters. That'll be Wednesday on Moe Gaffney. Jim Fowler, he spent a lot of time around wild animals. Perhaps a, perhaps a bit too much time. As this highlight from the Vicki Lawrence show reveals, Fowler knows intimate details about the mating habits of all sorts of slow-moving reptiles. Animal lover Betty White was also on the Vicky show, and she was, would you say, just fascinated by the insights into the sexual mechanics of turtle love. They're fascinating because, again, they're an example of the way nature is de designed an animal so it's protected. How fast could they go if they wanted to scoot well, up the stairs? Well, we're going to put them down here in a minute, but this is the payoff. Look at this. This is the... Oh. Oh, this, this is the result of these two. This is the baby and these are the parents. And it's a very rare occasion. These have hardly ever been born in captivity. Oh, almost never, for it. And this is an example of a private individual, Tom Minton, who is actually raising these. Uh, but, Betty, I think you might be interested to tell which is which. Could you tell which is the male and which is the female? Well, if you can't tell on a serval, I'm certainly not going to get into this. Well, How there's, a, do you there's tell? a great way to do it. How? Okay, you see, if you can turn this one upside down slowly, notice that the carapace on, underneath on, is sort of flat. Uh huh. Look at this one. This is the male. Oh. oh. Just, Wait, I didn't get to see the yeah. female. Just, the female's fat? Yes, sure? why? Yes. Yeah, why? Well, listen, if yeah. <laughs> Those were red-footed tortoises from South America. Do you know why their feet are red, do you? No, you don't. Yeah, never mind. This Wednesday on Vicky Show, break out the straight jackets and get yourself a net. It's Wacky Guest Day. Craziness will ensue with the likes of Rip Taylor, Tiny Tim, and Chuddle. Still to come, you will meet Celine Dion. She is quite a singer. She'll relive some of her most embarrassing moments right, right after this. We were going to call it Talk Jello, but that wouldn't have made any sense. We're back. This is Talk Soup. Greg Kinnear still with you, checking out highlights of the talk shows. Highlight from Shirley for you right now. Quick note before we get to that. This week, starting, I guess, tomorrow, we're going to start billboarding how you can get tickets, go about getting tickets for the... Uh, new later show over at NBC. We have a live studio audience of over 650,000 people every night. And uh, so tickets, tickets are hard to come by, as you might imagine. But we're going to tell you how to go about getting those if you're out here in Southern California. You want to come to the big show? Come on down, is what we say. 
Now let's get to the business at hand. Celine Dion, major star in her native Canada. She's from Canada before making a splash here in the U.S. Judging from the highlight from Shirley, which is taped in Canada, Dion still has a great rapport with her fellow countrymen and women. Here she is now describing a very humorous Grammy night faux pas. I decided to sit down like quite far in the audience because I said, I'm going to let all the artists, they're pretty sure they're going to win. So me, I'm going to go far. I'm just, I just want to be part of it when they say nomination, you know, whatever. So it's going to be nice to hear my name. So it'll be great. <laughs> so I'm here and, and I'm listening, but not to pay too much attention. And here they say, and the winner, Peeble Bryson and Celine Dion. A spring under me, ping, like this. I, said, I, stood, I stood up, and then <laughs> I, was so, I was so far in the audience, it took me so long to come in the, with the dress and everything. <laughs> The, the announcer who said Celine Dion was looking and uh, she's not here. So he said, I'm sorry, Celine Dion and people are not here. I say, I'm coming! Celine Dion on the Sur Sur Shirley Show. Celine, a little bit later on, had these remarks to say about tonight's show host, Jay Leno. And this is too like this. Oh, you've really I, got this. You've really but, figured but, out well, every... I figured everything. And you know what happened when I did the first time the... Uh, um, the Tonight Show with Jay Leno, he met me and he said, he said, hey, Celine, nice to meet you. Finally, I met, I meet someone that has the same chin as me. <laughs> there you have it, highlight of Shirley there with Celine Dion. Actually, I believe we have the talk soup chin chart comparing Jay Leno with, oh, yeah, she's definitely got that, uh, that big chin thing happening. Wednesday, Shirley will meet women who claim they're married to the perfect husband. Are these ladies dreaming or telling the truth? Tune in and decide for yourself. That'll be Wednesday, how to have the perfect husband. Well, in many ways, Kenny is a typical 19-year-old. He likes to skateboard, hang out with his friends. Recently, he married his childhood sweetheart, Sarah. The thing that sets Kenny apart from most kids his age is that he was born with a serious disfigurement. He's born without a spine, and his parents had to make the terrible decision of removing his legs. Here he is now telling Jerry Springer how he has learned to live with this handicap. Take a look at this highlight. Kenny was born without a spine and had his legs amputated so that he could have a backbone. Sarah and Kenny have been married for a little over a year. Even though family members on both sides had doubts about their getting married, they say they are meant for each other. And I'm going to ask you about the marriage in, in a moment. But first, Kenny... I want you just, because it's the first thing that gets on our minds when we see you, is tell us about your everyday life, what it is like going through um, life as you are. Normal. It's normal for me, just like if you're normal. Yes. It's a, the normal life. What, are there difficult, what, what kind of things in everyday life are difficult for you that you would think would be easier for me, let's say? There is none. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. So when you want to get around, you get around right. using my hands. Your hands. Right. Um, are there any chores around the house you can't do? I can do anything. I already love your spirit. Okay. Yeah. On Wednesday show, Jerry Springer gets to know women who are fighting crime on their own terms. Tune in and meet housewife vigilantes Wednesday. We're going to take a quick break and be back with a couple of phone sex lovebirds getting acquainted actually in person here next. Deandra uses the phone to reach out and touch someone that someone is usually himself. But invariably, the voice on the other end of the line belongs to his longtime 976 phone line companion, Destiny. The two of them have been intimate over the phone, excess of... A thousand times? No. No. Well, they talk a lot. Friday, thanks to Richard Bay, these two finally met face to face. 
There they go. <laughs> Destiny, can I get you to sit? <laughs> can I just tell you something? Destiny, if you're in the phone business, you must, you must not have a push-button phone with nails yes, like these. Yes, I do. How do you push the phone with nails? Those are claws. Um, Richard? What? You learn to do things that you ordinarily really don't know how to do, but you learn. Okay. Uh -huh. So are you, are, are you disappointed in, uh, in Dondre? Or is oh, it what you're... no. Damn, I want to take him home now. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Sorry about that, Andre. Such meeting destiny was sheer destiny. He dialed the wrong number, and apparently there she was. Oh, yeah. Wrong 976 number. Mistake, sorry. Wednesday on Richard's show, some cheating lovers get busted by their angry mates. It's judgment day for these two, three, even four-timing louses. That's it. That's going to do it for Talk Soup today. I hope to see you back here tomorrow when we'll do more of, I guess, the same. See you then.